Hey guys, Austin here with my second power rankings video of the season. Let's just jump right into it. At 32, the Chicago Blackhawks are down one spot from last week. They're three and seven in their last 10. There's not a whole lot going well for Chicago this season, but I guess that is the plan in a rebuild. Connor Bedard is always must watch hockey. At 31, the Ottawa Senators have dropped 11 spots since I last ranked them. They are four and six in their last 10. They should probably fire DJ Smith. There is too much talent on this team to play as poorly as they have. They did have a fun brawl against Florida, though. At 30, the San Jose Sharks are up two spots. They are 4-5-1 and one in their last 10. They beat the Canucks, Capitals, and Devils in regulation since my last power rankings. They, have also, they also have more regulation wins than the Toronto Maple Leafs, which is pretty surprising to me. At 29, the Anaheim Ducks have fallen two spots. They are 2-8 and eight in their last 10, and they have lost eight straight games in regulation, and they look like the team that we saw last season under Dallas Aikens. Trevor Zegras is struggling badly this year. At number 28, the Minnesota Wild are surprisingly up two spots despite just being 3-5-2 and two in their last 10. They've rattled off a couple of wins since firing Dean Evison. Uh, goaltending has been a major downfall for the Wild this season, but we'll see if they've turned a corner with the coaching change. At 27, the Columbus Blue Jackets are up two spots. They are 4-6 and six in their last 10. They beat Boston and Ottawa this week, and they gave Carolina a run for their money as well. Line A and Goudreau have started to look a little bit better than earlier in the season. At 26, the Montreal Canadiens are down four spots from last week. They are four and six in their last 10 games. The Habs are dead last in regulation wins this season with just four. Goaltending cannot bail them out every night. Um, Sam Montembeau was extended, so good for him. I think he's earned it based on his play this year. At number 25, the Seattle Kraken are down seven spots this week. They are 3-4-3 three, and three in their last 10 games. They continue to struggle at keeping the puck out of their net and scoring goals. They have yet to find any consistency this season. At 24, the Buffalo Sabres are down one spot from last week. They are 4-5-1 and one in their last 10. The Sabres pounded the Rangers 5-1 this week and then lost to St. Louis 6-4. I'm surprised this team is struggling as much as they have this season. At 23, the New Jersey Devils are up three spots. They are 4-6 and six in their last 10 games. Their jump up the power rankings is mostly due to the major drop-off of other teams. The Devils dominate possession, but they cannot get a save. They outshot the San Jose Sharks 48-17 to and still lost 6-3. At number 22, the Edmonton Oilers are up six spots this week. They are 7-3 and three in their last 10 games. They are riding a four-game win streak heading into their five-day break. The advanced metrics and eye tests confirm that this team has probably turned a corner on their season. I will not be surprised if they continue to rise quickly up the power rankings. At number 21, the Nashville Predators are up four spots. They are 6-4 and four in their last 10. They beat the Winnipeg Jets and Pittsburgh Penguins, but they got hammered by the Minnesota Wild this week. They've played well this season and are surprising a lot of people. At number 20, the Calgary Flames. They are up four spots from last week's rankings. They are 6-3-1 in their last 10 games. They picked up wins against the Golden Knights and Dallas Stars, so that helps bump them up a few spots. Never easy to beat the Golden Knights or Stars. At 19, the Pittsburgh Penguins. They are up two spots this week. They are 5-4-1 and one in their last 10. The only reason the Penguins are probably not top two in their entire division is because their power play is clicking at just 11.9%. When their power play regresses to the mean, watch out for this team. The New York Islanders are down one spot. They are 4-3-3 three, and three in their last 10. They don't really play an inspiring brand of hockey, but they are finding ways to stay in the playoff picture thanks to solid goaltending and Batman points. At number 17, the Tampa Bay Lightning. They are down seven spots from last week. They are 4-5-1 and one in their last 10. They are on a three-game losing streak. I mentioned last week that they play high event hockey, and it looks like it is coming back to bite them right now. At number 16, the Philadelphia Flyers. They are 6-3-1 and one in their last 10. They continue to play pretty solid hockey overall. No change in their power rankings from last week. At number 15, the Arizona Coyotes. They are actually up four spots from last week. They are 5-4-1 and one in their last 10. They are currently on a three-game winning streak. <clears throat> Sorry. And they are riding an unsustainable shooting percentage, but they are very fun to watch. Good for Arizona. At number 14, the St. Louis Blues are up one spot from last week. They are 6-4-0 in their last 10. Their advanced metrics tell me the Blues are going to regress at some point, but they are finding ways to keep winning, so that allows them to stay in the top 15 of the power rankings. 
At number 13, the Winnipeg Jets are down six spots from last week's rankings. They are 6-4 and four in their last 10 games. They are on a three-game losing streak, and they've looked out of sorts since Rick Bonus rejoined the team behind the bench. We'll see if they can turn it around or if this is just a blip on their season so far. At number 12, the Carolina Hurricanes are up two spots. They are 6-3-1 in their last 10. Despite continued goaltending troubles, the Hurricanes are one of the league's best possession teams, and they should continue to climb the standings as the season progresses. At number 11, the Washington Capitals. They are up two spots from my last ranking. They are 7-2-1 in their last 10. They defeated the LA Kings, and that is no easy feat. Credit where it is due, Washington keeps finding ways to win, even when I think they are going to regress. At number 10, the Detroit Red Wings are up one spot from last week. They are 5-3-2 and two in their last 10 games. Despite carrying some of the worst advanced metrics in the leagues at 5-on-5, five five, the Red Wings continue their mostly winning ways. Their PDO right now is 1.03. Take that as you will. At number nine, the Toronto Maple Leafs are up three spots. They are 7-2-1 and one in their last 10. Toronto has just five regulation wins this season and some pretty meh analytics, but results matter and they are finding ways to win games. The Marner bubble against Seattle was awesome. At number eight, the Vancouver Canucks, they are down two spots from last week. They are 5-5 five and five in their last 10. The regression is starting to show for the Canucks, but they still own the highest uh, PDO in the NHL at 1.038. So there is going to be even more regression coming, but picking up Zadorov from the Flames was a really nice get for the team. We'll see if that helps stabilize them a bit. At number seven, the Florida Panthers. They are up two spots. They are 6-3-1 and one in their last 10 games. The Panthers crushed Ottawa and Montreal this week, and they outplayed the Leafs and probably deserve the win. They are incredibly tough to play against. Don't be surprised to see this team continue to rise the ranks during the season. At number six, the Dallas Stars. They are up two spots from last week. They are 6-2-2 two two in their last 10 games. The Stars continue to play well and drive play. Do not be surprised if they move into the top five in the power rankings in the near future. At number five, the Boston Bruins. They are down one spot from last week. They are 5-3-2 and two in their last 10 games. They had lost three in a row before defeating the San Jose Sharks. Their PDO is third in the NHL at 1.03, so there is more regression on the horizon for this team. We will see how they perform against Toronto, Columbus, and Buffalo this week. At number four, the Vegas Gold Knights. They are up one spot. They are 4-3-3 three and three in their last 10. They are up slightly from last week's rankings. Goaltending continues to regress a little bit, but they are finding ways to bank points and continue to stay atop the NHL standings. At number three, the Colorado Avalanche. They have not moved since last week, and they are 7-2-1 in their last 10. There's not much to complain about if you are an Avs fan. The team continues to look and play like a contender. At number two, the Los Angeles Kings are down one spot. They are 7-2-1 and one in their last 10 games. The Kings continue to own the NHL's best expected goals for percentage, high danger, chances for percentage, and they dominate pretty much every team they play. The only reason they move down one spot this week is because the New York Rangers. They move up one spot. They are 8-2 and two in their last 10 games. They are second in the NHL standings overall, but they're just one point back of the Golden Knights, and they have three games in hand on the Golden Knights. The team continues to roll despite a 5-1 loss to the Sabres. Consistent goaltending and production up and down the lineup are the main factors in this week's power rankings for the New York Rangers. Good for them. Uh, their PDO is also 1.00, which means their play is sustainable. Uh, so the Rangers are going to continue to play very well and be near the president trophy or be in the president's trophy race all season i would think well what do you guys think is there anyone that should have been ranked higher or lower who is due to regress and who's due to rise in next week's rankings if you guys enjoyed the video make sure to hit like if you really liked it make sure to subscribe i will be providing more power rankings every week for the rest of the season thank you all for your support and i will see you all next time take care